Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, so I've been making these different types of wooden mugs for a while. Um, these particular ones are made out of spalted beech. Um, and I seem to have quite a lot of interest in people asking me how, how do I turn a mug like this um, on a wood lathe. Um, so I just thought I'd do, you know, a step by step then for anyone who's interested so they can have a go themselves. So I start off with um, a piece of spalted beech. So this particular blank came through native wood turning blanks by a gentleman called Alan Mags. Um, so look him up. He does some fantastic sort of, um, some fantastic stock. You can see the grain there, absolutely gorgeous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for a step by step how you turn this 200 by 100 millimeter um, wood blank then into a wooden mug. So this particular batch, um, the closest I could get was some 180 bowl blanks and it does work however it leaves you kind of quite close between the handle and the body of the mug so I've gone for some slightly more expensive blanks slightly bigger blanks then just to give us a little bit of leeway to get the outer edge of the um, of the blank sort of turn nice and round then before we start profiling it and shaping it to get the handle so stick with me guys um, and I'll show you a step by step thank you Okay, so first part of the process is gonna be something fairly familiar to anyone who's done any level of um, bowl turning. So I'm using this device here, which is basically 90 degrees, center of that being 45 degrees. And I'm gonna offer that over the blank and draw some pencil marks to the center. Okay, this will help me then center the bowl blank. Whoop. And just in case it's slightly off true, what I always like to do is kind of go in from a few different sides and angles okay so what we've got here then is we're seeing some commonalities that this sort of bowl blank is ever so slightly out which is which is fine you know these are these are hand cut by Alan down in his um, machine shop so by the time I've done a load of scrappy marks I'm looking for sort of the common center seems to be somewhere around this this point here now I don't have to be too kosher with it because obviously I'm gonna be I'm going to be returning the outside of the bowl blank anyway to make it nice and true. So um, as you can see, first things first there, drill a hole in the center. That's going to line up then for the face plate to screw straight in. So I always drill these holes slightly undersized, especially on a softer wood, because uh, it allows them for that center screw to get a nice purchase. I'm just going to wind that in like so. Again, a nice fine thread on this center screw has to give you a nice tight fit so that is basically where we're at with that one so I'm going to strip the chuck off of the head of this wood lathe so this is an Axminster M950 wood lathe um, absolutely fantastic piece of kit nice and simply now this is going to screw straight onto the headstock of the lathe and there we go so I might just stick a screw in the outer edge of this cup and that will stop then just any slight last minute moves oh, I don't know that's pretty good actually we'll, we'll go with that we'll go with that so now it's time to see if the proofs in a pudding and we'll fire the lathe up now it's running ever so slightly out of true so we'll go across now um, and just true it all up so my favorite tool these days seems to be this Ashley Isles um, bowl gauge nice quality piece of high-speed steel and it's round about sort of a half inch across this is a fantastic gauge and over the years just regrinding have just helped profile and just bring these top points um, away whereas when this was quite new it's quite quite square on these top points and they used to catch quite a bit so what we're going to do now is spin the lever and we'll start to take away some of this excess
Now, as you can see at this stage, we've trued all this surface up, okay, and you can see all the way around, all that original sort of wax that's put on this timber to seal it up is gone. Um, and for the most part, got some fairly clean cuts all the way along. However, where it comes to the end grain, we have got a little bit of tear out, which I'm not too concerned about at this stage because, you know, when this wood becomes spalted, you know, part of that is a, is a fungal, you know, it starts to rot the wood and it starts to eat into it. So we can clean that up as we're going, but as you can see, you start to see the, the grain and the, all the spalting figuring coming out in this timber. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Okay, next stage is, I'm going to work a little bit on this back face to make sure that's nice and flat and level um, and then we're going to start to mark out roughly where we want the chuck to seat where we want the handle to seat um, and where we're going to sort of start to turn away some of the excess of this wood then to form the bowl you know off of this back corner and then form the handle here and then last thing will be cut a chuck reveal in this back face so i can turn effectively this wood over connect it to the chuck and then re-spin to start forming the internal bowl so so at this stage if i just take the tool rest out of the way for you you can see what we've got here is a center mark now this first line that i've cut in here this is going to be the starting edge of where the chuck's going to seat in and the chuck's going to open up and it's going to grip out on the underside of this cut now this line i've cut here that's going to be the outside of the actual mug bowl and then you can see this line over here that's going to be roughly the thickness of the handle going all the way around okay so as you can see it's a pretty much just an ornate bowl style cut we're going to do okay and then the only last thing to look at is going to be marking from the side of this blank is going to be this sort of thickness here for the for the top lip and then obviously for the depth of the handle itself now again this is you know not set in stone you can make it to whatever you like um, and again the actual handle shape this one's sort of quite square and flat on the top you can have that sort of with more of a round I've done them with far more of a round than this um, but obviously with this size of blank you need to make sure you've got an adequate aperture then to, to slide your finger into and effectively you know pick the cup up and actually hold it Okay, so at this stage here, I'll just take the tool rest back out again. So at this stage here, this is what we've got. Okay, so we've got the handle edge looking like now, we've got the bowl, we've got the recess ready to accept the chuck, um, which that might need a little bit of work. Um, we've got this nice lip here. So we're pretty much at a stage now finish this bowl section off because there's some if you can see it on the camera there's some obnoxious lines I'm gonna take that out and we're gonna make it all nice and smooth and cylindrical like this one so it's a matching pair okay now I'm never gonna profess that the dimensions are gonna be identical even though they're pretty bloody close and this one should have a slightly bigger handle profile I'm never gonna profess to be make exactly matching sets because to be fair they're handmade aren't they you know not, not that good so I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit I'll cut the recess of this bowl uh, sorry for this chuck I'll bring you back then once that's done and we'll move on to the next step which is then mounting it to the chuck
Okay, so at this stage, we're now getting ready to, um, to put some finish on. So this is effectively what it's gonna look like once it's fully finished. It's got a bit of dust on it. Um, this is what it's gonna look like. Gives that nice, you know, warm, rich color to it. And then it's really gonna emphasize all this spout. And I think this one's gonna turn out really nice. If you look at the, the deep sort of black spouting lines in this one, this one's gonna look gorgeous, you know? So you're gonna pick it up. Oh, it feels good, it feels good. So my um, finisher choice is plastic coat by Rustins. Um, I've been using this a hell of a lot lately and what I'm finding is, especially with this um, beach, it seems to really soak into the wood. This stuff goes off like bloody concrete. It's heat proof, it's food safe after it's completely cured and you know, with the fact that it soaks into the wood so well, it becomes part of the grain structure of the wood, uh, fills all those little tiny voids and helps to make it heat proof and waterproof. Um, when cups are finished, sometimes you do get boiling hot water straight into the cup and you get an odd few sort of air bubbles where the wood's kind of breathing. Um, none of that really necessarily concerns me sort of too much. Um, you know, it kind of is what it is. Wood's a natural product that's going to breathe and I kind of want it to in a sense. Um, and I have found, you know, through process and elimination, or trial and elimination, I've been making these cups like this for over a year now. And um, I do find that the little bit of moisture uh, sorry a little bit of air that comes out doesn't seem to affect the moisture uh, one thing i would say for the rustins plastic coat is you do need a well ventilated area so i will be sort of moving this outside as soon as i painted it and i'm only really painting it in here like this because of the video um, and you will need some gloves now these are just standard cheapest chips food safe gloves that um you know i bought locally and you can just bin them when you're finished old brush cut the bristles down sort of fairly short um, and then I use Rustin's plastic coat brush thinners, uh, brush cleaner, whatever you want to call it, when I finish then just to sort of clean up and reuse the same brushes. Now this, this brush has done quite a few coats. It is a four to one ratio. So as you can see, I'm using five mil dialed out by one of my daughter's um, cowpole syringes. And I'm gonna go with 25 milliliters of finish. That's going to be four milliliter, uh, 20 milliliters, sorry, of the standard coating, and then that's going to be five milliliters then of the the hardener. Basically, I choose to just slosh it straight into the bowl. Once I'm getting to a stage where I'm putting the final coats on, I'll have a tendency to put mix this into a pot and then apply it separately, just because I don't want to be left with sort of too much excess. Whereas these first few coats really going to soak that in so I'm not too phased about there being a little pool in the bottom because it's going to soak the majority not not all of it but it soak the majority and the rest of it then just kind of solidifies at the bottom you know if it's a very thin layer it solidifies quite nicely and then leaves you with a you know a nice waterproof base to your cup so I'm just going to use the brush now and I'm just going to give it a good mix so just for the purposes of the video I'm going to come straight to the outside and you can see now this is going to give that luscious gloss forever wet look and it really starts to depict all the grain now and it starts to depict the uh you know especially the spot when i really love spalted wood you know and literally i'm brushing it on and as you can possibly see by the camera with the light catching it it acts like a bit like an oil-based gloss you know it just the, the top surface as long as there's not enough on there for any runs to occur then actually it just bleeds back and gives you that perfectly flat finish um, one thing i would say for this is you can possibly see by the camera i'm not really sure but there's patches of you can see have gone dull instantly and that is literally the finish now is soaked in and it's you know it just needs more applied to bring it to that surface finish so i'll give it so many coats i flatten it back then with a real fine wet and dry um, and i find that doesn't take too much of the you know it doesn't eat into the surface too much and then I'll basically go again with another coat and I'll keep building the coats up until it just physically won't take any more coat in any part of the cup. It's all sort of fully finished on the outside. There's nothing soaking in. That way then I know I've got a complete seal all the way around the cup inside and out. Now, you know, there's nothing to stop you from doing some sort of, you know, oil finish on the outside to get a satin look and just actually sort of you know 
Rustin's plastic coat in the bowl. Um, the reason why Rustin's plastic coat, all of it, is actually it just makes it pretty much maintenance free. You know, I've got cooksers and I've got cups and stuff made out of wood and spoons and different things like that that all require constant maintenance. This is pretty much maintenance free. You know, I've got a, a cherry cup down in the house, which is my personal cup. I've got a black poplar cup down there um, and I've got a spouted sycamore cup and in the year that I've had them and I've made them and, and you know given them plenty of coats and Rustin's plastic coat they've never needed any other maintenance so this is why I choose to do it this way so if I'm going to sell a cup to someone or I'm going to give a cup away you know I'm not expecting then the end user to constantly have to keep up with any form of maintenance because you know that's just going to prolong uh, sorry shorten the life of the product if if they don't keep up with it you know and it's nice to just be able to give something or sell something to someone and, and that's it like you know it's a forever use product so as you can see this is really starting to take on a lovely color now and i just keep going over it and going over it and using up all of that 25 mil of product um that i put into the bowl and you, you'd be surprised sometimes i've taken some real punky um birch and you'd be surprised how much in one single sitting that this thing will drink you know it really really takes a lot on board and i'll just make sure then before i set it down um you know i keep an eye on it for a little while just to make sure there's no runs forming on the surface and at this stage with it being a first coat if you get a run or two i'm not really that fussed to be honest as long as it's nothing significant because i'm going to be putting subsequent coats over the top anyway and you know at certain stages throughout the coating process um i will be flattening it back anyway you know it will need denibbing after the first couple of coats as you can see i mean look at that grain pattern you can see the end grain there as as per usual the end grain's nice and thirsty that's that's taken plenty on board um i always make sure places like around the the lip of the cup as well has got plenty on you know it's the sort of surface where it's going to want to run off of it and sort of run away um you know and it's also the the main part where you actually put your lips to so i want it to be nice and sealed but i mean this i'm i'm really chuffed with this this is a cracking piece of wood you know and it's come out really nicely get around that little odd road bristle there there we go so as you can see as fast as it's sucking it in i'm just going to keep layering it and keep layering it and keep going at it you know until you know most most of that product i put into it is done you know maybe i could have done with maybe mixing up slightly less and just letting this cure and go off but i'll just keep working it in so what do you think there we go. i'll put it down next to uh it's the previous one i've made look at that cool eh well i hope you've enjoyed this video i'm going to carry on coating this up um, i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it's given you know someone out there a good insight into how to sort of do this um i have turned cups in the past more of a traditional style cookser shaped cup rather than a mug um, and i've actually cut the handle spigot and i processed it all up on the bandsaw um, and then i've turned it with the handle on um, the only downside is is obviously you can appreciate it puts a hell of a lot of stress on the bearings of the um the lathe with that peg just spinning around unbalanced it makes life difficult then for actually physically turning it because there's so much vibration and chatter and it you know everything's running out of true it's fighting against you um so i find this really especially for someone starting out this is the easiest way to get yourself started and turning mugs um and then you can kind of go from there you know i'm quite happy to share some pictures and some footage of um other you know traditional style cooks as i've made especially the ones i've you know lathe turned the bowls while the the handle's still on and it's live it's, it definitely is a definitely is fun trying to do it but can be a little bit frustrating as well for someone who's new you know someone who's just starting out um yeah I, like i said i hope everyone enjoyed it and i hope it's been useful to someone out there thank you very much everybody really appreciate your time